All right, now we're back. Bash in the brain, live from Florida and Idaho. I'm in the flamingo room at my mother's house. The kids are playing. It's 85 and sunny out. We're good. Why? 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 Because it's it, because Florida? it's so cold well, in New York. Weekend. It's so cold in New York. There was a flight Sunday night. I said the heck with it. Lots of my, my thought was for the flight, I can catch Big Tens, and then on the plane, Southwest has ESPN two. So I could live stream ESPN two, and then everything's good. All right, <clears throat> your boys versus my boys. You call well, down the thunder. Well, Plan. hold on, because you claim at times you do these shows, and you do the classic Willie, the classic Willie, and you say, you know, I'm not Husker Willie. I'm not Penn State Willie, but you love to get in the trenches. You love to get in the trenches with your teams when they're the underdog. So now that the Huskers are crying, all of a sudden, Penn State hater Willie comes out and Husker Willie well, shines. It's a, listen, it's a perfect time. I'm not Husker Willie. I'm not Penn State Willie. I'm not anything Willie. I'm not Lehigh Willie. Uh, but it's a, it's a good it's a good shtick, right? They're fighting. I'll, I'll defend the honor of Mark Manning right now. You, well, you... In reality, you should defend both of their honor. And if anything, nope. the guy, the guy, ironically, I'm not, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Let's put it this way. True or false, Damon, Damien Hahn is on the committee. He's the only coach on the committee. Whose shirt are you wearing right now? Damien Hahn. Oh. Damien Hahn. <laughs> Already. Damien Hahn, Damien Hahn probably <laughs> voted against Bubba Wilson. Hey, all I said is there's one coach on that committee, and you are wearing his shirt the day after all this happens. Call whatever um, you want. It doesn't have it doesn't have much to do with Damian Hahn and everything. All right, so let's the process yeah. is stupid. Let so let's set the stage. So yesterday the at large bids come out, wild cards, whatever you want to call them, and you know. I'm kind of removed from, I feel like when the coaches are the ones who get the most upset, everybody wants to send as many guys to nationals as possible. Every coach wants to give every one of their guys the opportunity to at least AA. I don't know if a wild card or an at-large bid has ever been in contention, with the exception that we'll talk about in a few minutes, exceptions. But well, great. To set the backdrop to all this, and, and for people who don't remember, um, they're going to see my tweets, right? I, I tweeted, I got frustrated yesterday and I tweeted this. I tweeted, um, I'm so over the gamesmanship from forfeiting to wild card prayers to opaque algor algorithms. Just stop the BS. Give a quota. An allocation pre-conference, so you know Big Ten's taking six at one thirty-three. You take six at Big thirty one thirty-three at the Big Ten's, you're in. You take seventh, you're out. Okay, just just do that, and we have no. You handle your own destiny. Okay, and to set the to set the stage for that. What we've been doing for the last 25 years is tweaking this system and tweaking this system and the coaches get in their own way. The coach, oh, let's change it to this. Let's change it to that. Yeah, let's change it to benefit you and your guys in the way you want to see it. How about we just change it to something that's equitable and prescribed and meritocratic? Um, what a word. Wrestling is a sport where, I mean, everybody likes that phrase, right? Everybody likes that phrase that Terry said, you get what you earn. You get what you earn. Yeah, until it's time to get what you earn, and then you want to say, well, I I overslept that day. I had a bad cut. I rolled my ankle. Uh, let's, go, let's go to the algorithm and see what's going on over there. It's just stop the bullshit. You get four in the ACC, you take fourth, you go. You take fifth, you're out. Bye-bye. And so the, the big, where people started crying yesterday was, and this is all me just going based on Twitter, not talking to coaches. Carter Storacci gets an at-large bid at 174. 
He did not compete at Big Tens. He stepped on the mat and the injury defaulted. Carter and the game plan was for him to, if he felt good enough, wrestle. Carter felt good enough. He was going to wrestle. At the last minute, a decision was made. We're not going to risk it. A Big Ten title, your third Big Ten title, is is not worth risking your the remainder whole, of your – hold on. Topic in and of itself. Totally. It's not worth risking your fourth NCAA title in a couple weeks. And it is in the coach's best interest to protect their athletes. At the end of the day, these coaches care about their athletes only. And I understand that. That is that is what it is, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So then, all of a sudden, I started, and, and everybody expected Carter to get the at-large bid. Everybody. And he should. And he should. And, and then Manning and Travell and the Nebraska coaches – started getting very upset on Twitter, and Manning, out of left field, accuses Penn State of of Nick Soriano having a broken ankle and having no true intent to wrestle at NCAAs. Right away, his teammates on the team, Matt McCutcheon, Bo Nickel, said, not true. Nick okay. did not have a broken ankle. He was rolling around the day before, and he was going to compete if he felt good enough, and yeah, they made the decision. The work. He's downstairs in the room working out right now, is the famous quote, to which Penn State fans even laugh at. Well, so a couple things. Number one, his ankle wasn't broken. And so for Manning to come out and say his ankle's broken and just Dang. accuse a rumor – for a coach, I love, the, I love the I love the path you're going down. No, I'm not going down. I'm not going down a path. What I'm saying is, I'm telling the story in the way I saw it unfold, which was, I saw people upset with seats, and you know, I, different coaches. I saw Bracky was upset, who's with the West Virginia program about a West Virginia kid, and you you obviously saw for the most part. Coaches upset that their kid didn't get in that large bid. I don't pretend to know that. I don't pretend to know the matrix and the RPI and who should get it, who shouldn't. But I did think it was crazy. Okay. That's a problem. No, That's I, a problem. Well, hold on. I agree. But what I'm saying is the, the first thing that was crazy was seeing Manning accuse Penn State of flat-out lying with Soriano having no intent to compete. That is preposterous. To think that Kel, who... All these coaches are, are, you say gamesmanship, I'll use that word. They all do it to the ability that the system lets them. And I don't think, I think they all should to that effect. Why wouldn't they? If Cal can not have Carter wrestle and still go to NCAAs, this is not the difference of, hey, if Carter wrestled, there was a shot and he wasn't going to go. Carter could have wrestled one match in the semi, placed top six and gone. Well, why, or quarters, well, whatever. Why? Well, why should that matter? Why should, why what should matter? that matter? Why should it matter? I mean, that almost makes it worse, bro. That almost makes it worse. Well, he could have. Well, then what the fuck? Well, so for one thing, why are we... It, it sounds like you're more mad at the rules than a program. Yes! And, I'm and not that, mad, I'm, and, not mad at, I'm not mad at Kale. I'm not mad at Carter. I'm not mad at... Um, Michael Blockus and Minnesota. I'm not mad at them. I'm mad at the rules because the rules allow for this. You just said in your own words, if Carter could have went, he would. If Carter had to go, he would have went. So make it so that you have to go. But and is I'll it tell you worth? Thing. Well, I'll tell you another thing. If if Carter would have wrestled one or two more matches in the regular season defaulted and not net he, he could have won one match and not defaulted out and not have needed a wild card because he would have allocated but he didn't so not only did he not wrestle at conference tournaments he didn't wrestle enough during the season to get an allocation which number one means we lost the ability to see carter staraki as much as we could and two it affected the allocation of somebody else. It affected somebody else getting in. Somebody else somebody else is not at NCAAs this year. They did not qualify for NCAAs because Carter Storaki, one, didn't wrestle enough matches, and two, didn't wrestle in the conference tournament. Well, for one thing, in the Olympic year, I'm not surprised that you saw guys who have Olympic aspirations. Well, just Don't listen matter. to me. So, so what is, is your proposal to increase the number of minimum matches to twenty? 
No, no. My my approach is very simple. There are no at larges. It, it, 174 gets five at larges this year, right? Um, make it not allocate 33. You allocate 33. Why did they ever? I, I haven't paid that attention, that close attention for too long. Why did they ever switch to that and start doing that? Well, because back in the day, which was an abject disaster, what it used to be is okay, Big 12 gets three bids at um, three bids at 165. Uh, and then the Big 12 in total gets three wild cards. So they'd have the wrestling tournament. The, the kids would place what they placed and they were going. And then they said, okay, we got three conference, we got three wild cards conference wide. Let's bid on our best three guys. And you'd have, you know, eight coaches in a room saying, we're going to pick this guy, this guy, and that guy. Now, obviously, guys, coaches want their guys to go. So it'd be a big fight. There'd be all kinds of collusion. I mean, there's a famous story. There is a famous story. I was there that year. It was at Hilton Coliseum, Ames, Big 12s, Big 12s at the time. And um, the Huskers had a kid that was ranked second or third in the country, fourth in the country, B.J. Wright. He was... I don't know, 32 and three. And, you know, the big 12 was small at the time and he like lost twice. And they get in the room afterwards. Now the kids ranked fourth in the country. They get in the room afterwards and they're all colluding and they're saying, and Bobby Douglas says to uh, Mark Manning, Hey, you vote for my guy. I'll vote for BJ Wright. Manning says, okay. And they're, they're all politicking, right, with everybody. And it comes to the vote. Manning votes for the Cyclone. They go to the thing to vote for Nebraska. Bobby Douglas doesn't raise his hand. Mark Manning chases him out of the room. You son of a bitch! <laughs> I mean, that, that's the kind of amateur stuff we're, we were dealing with. So they went to, okay, we'll have a committee. Then we'll have a formula. Then we'll have this and we'll have that. And the pertinent thing here, and what nobody talks about is, what nobody talks about is two things. One, the formula, the matrix, is based on coaches rank. And coaches a, ranks should be gone. That I've long said the coaches should not be doing rankings. Rank and RPI and a bunch of other factors, right? Every single year, point one, every single year, they announce, they announce the at-larges, and then the next day they announce the coaches rank and RPI. So you don't even get to see that before. Like, they don't come out with it. They come after it after the wild cards are announced. I mean, what kind of backwards-ass system is that for the fans, for coaches? Okay, number one. Number two, the results of the matrix. Let's see those numbers where Jared Sima, Bubba Wilson, and I'm I'm only using Bubba Wilson as an example here because I don't think this is about Bubba Wilson. I'm telling you, they Nebraska asked me. I had that article going up about who's on the bubble, who needs a thing, who allocated uh, potential for wild cards, and I was getting emails and, and text uh, from coaches all over the country. Do you think this guy gets in? Do you think that guy gets in? And and you know, 95% of them, I was like, give me a break, guys. Give me a break. This guy's not getting in. And, 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 but it didn't matter because when they didn't get in, they went, they went nuts. This is, this is untol intolerable. This makes no sense. Dennis Robin from West Virginia, Hayden Drury from UVU, this guy from here, this guy from there, Bubba Wilson. Listen, my, my advice to all you is get it done during the regular season. Get it done during the regular season. May, you have, you have, it is your job as a coach to get your guys to NCAAs. You have from October to, to or November to March to satisfy it in one of many ways. And then you're going to come down to the last week of the season, all the hay is in the barn, and you're going to complain that you didn't get picked. Get it done.
get it done. Okay. And that goes to Nebraska and anybody else. But the system is stupid. They, they don't put out the coaches rank and RPI until after the at larges are selected. Number one, number two, it is based. The wild cards are based on this matrix, this matrix. Do you know when the matrix is released? Is it like in a couple weeks? Released? You know, you know, like, uh, you know, like, um, Kyle Bradkey saying about Dennis Robin. Where was he in the matrix? How come he didn't get in over he, over somebody else? Bubba Wilson, how did Jared Simma get in? Not get in. Jared Simma got in. Bubba Wilson didn't. Well, do you know when they find out in the matrix and who had the most? You know when they find out? Is it in a couple weeks from now? Never. They I never thought, release it. I thought they released never. it after NCAA's or something. They never. I must be thinking it. of something else. They it is wild. I, I agree that it's stupid. I And these I agree coaches, that, yeah. These coaches, I mean, I know for a fact, Brian Snyder and other coaches have hammered the NWCA and said, help me. Help me set up my schedule so I give my guys the best shot, right? Do I, do I schedule too tough? Do I schedule too soft? Do I schedule, how, how can I, how can I best prepare my guys? And with the zero transparency of the matrix, they can't even look at it and say, after the fact, say, you know what? Maybe we should do this a little different next year. So it, it, it's an asinine system. It's unnecessary. It's like anything. I mean, I don't want to get into politics, but. Anytime, dirty politics. Anytime you set up a system of checks and balances and then there's another then there's another system, then there's another bureau, then there's another thing. It gets muddy. And just let the wrestlers decide it on the mat. Just let the wrestlers if you if you know that Big 12 has six going from 149, then you go into the tournament and you say, I gotta take six. And guess what? If you twist an ankle, if you had the sniffles, that's the way life works. Look at Florida State. Florida State lost two quarterbacks last year. They were undefeated. They didn't get in. And the committee the committee there largely said, listen, you're not the same team without your starting quarterback. Um, and that's, that's an assessment version. That's not even what wrestling is. Wrestling is a de facto um, what happens on the mat. And so if you, if you get hurt at the wrong time of year, that's life. I mean, Nick Soriano got sick at the wrong time of the year. Did did they postpone the Olympic trials? Did they say, hey, Nick Suriano gets a wrestle off in three weeks? No. Name another sport when when North Carolina is in the Elite Eight against Kentucky and uh their their point guard rolled his ankle in the previous game. They don't go, you know what? Hold up. We're gonna call for a two week delay. We're gonna call for uh extra dispensation and just, you know. Pencil us in the next round. That's it, not the way the world works. I don't disagree with you. No, I don't disagree with you at all that the process is broken. And the process is not transparent. And I agree with you that, you know, it's like... So I agree that, like, there, there's two sides to, like, 74. In one case, Bubba Wilson, for example, lost 12 times this year. That's where it's like you got to get it done during the year. At the same time, I do understand that if the if gamesmanship can occur and Carter can go without wrestling and that does cause an extra guy to not get it, I understand the frustration. My whole thing was for Manning to say Soriano's ankle is broken, they had no intent okay. to ever wrestle him. Okay. Maybe that's maybe that is there's a whole lot to talk about with the Soriano situation. First things bringing first things first is the topic of Manning bringing it up and saying he had no plan to go, okay? What I'll say about that is <clears throat> he was too hurt to wrestle at conferences, correct? And guess what? He was too hurt to wrestle at NCAAs. So he screwed the whole bracket up. He screwed the whole entire bracket up. Uh, number one in the seating. Number two in the team race, because if I recall correctly, it was Nick Piccinini that got screwed. Nick Piccinini would have had a really better road, but he didn't. There's also, because... been a t there's also been a time, and there's other examples, but, you know, 
Null, for example. Null still ended up winning, winning the whole thing. So he didn't... Nolf, listen, listen. Nolf did his duty. Nolf took six and qualified. I, I understand, but, but still there was an aspect of wrestle the minimum that you have to preserve yourself don't get injured that's what i'm that, saying I'm not, I'm not assigning blame i'm not blaming penn state i'm saying if the rules were different that would have been avoided if the rules were different and you had to perform on conference weekend as a litmus test for your readiness for the ncaa's the way it's supposed to freaking be then nick soriano would have either won won enough matches to qualify without a you know, or two wouldn't have been able to go and he would have been out of the NCAA tournament, in which case the 125 bracket that year wouldn't have been totally jacked up. It, it was amateur hour. The whole thing was amateur hour. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> we, we, we held we held a spot for a guy who may or may not be able to go and two weeks prior was proven he couldn't go. A conference weekend, go out there and prove you're ready to go. If you're not, tough titties. <laughs> I, I did God, see. Uh, why, why, why are we, wrestling's the toughest sport in the world, and we constantly make excuses for people. Well, I, I think there. It, it, I don't it's disagree. About, it's not about Bubba Wilson. I like Bubba Wilson. I'm, I'm not crying tears for Bubba Wilson. I'm not crying tears for some of these guys that didn't get in. They, they didn't get it done. They didn't get it done. But I'm also defending what some of the people are saying, and that the process stinks. The process stinks, and uh, I did it see needs it. To be, it needs to be refined. I, I 100% Actually, agree with you. It doesn't you. need to be refined. It doesn't need to be refined. It needs to be scaled back, um, so it's not so freaking convoluted. I did see Killian Carnell came after you too. <laughs> uh, guess what? Part of, part of the new system is me. Part of the new system is me ran, ranting and raving. Because I ran it and raved for years that if you're not ready to go on conference weekend, if you default out, it's game in the system. And what'd they do? What did they do? They made it so that you had to step on the mat twice. That's a direct result of, of uh, media and social media enacting change. And Killian Cardinal, Killian Cardinal, was a really good wrestler. Dude's a warrior. He's awesome. But he def he wrestled a really light schedule. He was ranked really high. He defaulted at conferences, and I tweeted, Killian Cardinal should be hammered in the seeds at Nationals. And guess what? Killian Cardinal was hammered in the seeds at Nationals. Now, do I want somebody to be punished? No. Do I want a correct system and, and things to be fair? Yes. What would you see, Carter? Against Killian Cardinal. And here's the last point. Here's the last point about the, the Manning, Soriano, Kale situation. Manning apparently erroneously claimed that Soriano wasn't going to wrestle, and they knew he wasn't going to wrestle. And that might be false, right? That might be false. But... You can't live and operate behind the dark curtain where no information ever gets out like it's a black hole force field. And you don't tell anybody anything. And then when somebody speculates, you go, oh, that's not true. You're lying. Uh, be a little more transparent. I'm all for transparency. I'm all for transparency. I'm all for communication, and I've beaded the hell out of this drum for years. But just because there's not transparency does not give you the green light to go and speculate and say, well, since Penn State didn't disclose his injury, I'm just going to tell people that he's got a broken ankle. you got to balance that to some degree. Right. I mean, but I'll tell you what, that rumor is off repeated as fact in wrestling circles i'm not it, saying it might what not be true it might not be true yeah. when you hear it for years now right I don't, you're right you're right but i don't listen let, let's put it this way bo nickel matt mccutcheon two guys i would trust with anything love both Th of them they, they have 
Matt's a client of mine now, Bridge Wellness Center in Arizona. If you're in that if you're in that area and you need a chiropractic adjustment or occupational therapy, go see Matt McCutcheon and his wife. They're also having a baby suit. Congratulations. They're the best. What I'm saying is these guys are not going to rush to defend somebody who is on the team for, as Dave Portnoy says, a cup of coffee. I don't think they're rushing to the gate to say, like, it's not like it's not, Nolf, not, you know? Not, not disputing that. If, if Bo Nickel and Chenzo and Matt McCutcheon, I talked to Matt McCutcheon on a, on a FaceTime call a couple weeks ago. Awesome dude. I love him. Uh, salt of the earth. And if they say so, they say so. That being said, number one, there is never any word that comes out that's transparent that we get the story. I mean, listen, I just say it out loud. Nick Suriano was having a fantastic year. He rolled his ankle in like a non-contact way in a giant, giant dual meet. Then he doesn't wrestle at Big Tens. Then is he going to wrestle or is he not at, at NCAAs? He doesn't. He leaves Penn State, the number one program in the country. Nobody ever gets the story. All right? So don't cry to me. Oh, they're making things up. Well, oh, I'm not, I'm not crying to – hey, I'm not – I'll be very clear. I'm not crying to you. But if a – D1 Big Ten head coach comes out and straight up accuses another program of a, a made-up injury. There's there's a balance there between we don't know the truth, so we're just going to say what we think. And, like, listen, I like coaches being on Twitter. I like creating the noise. That, that's fine. That's fine. But you know what's not a rumor? That Kale and Penn State and Nick Suriano screwed that bracket up that year. That's not a rumor. That's fact. Whether it was intentional or not is the discussion. Not sure. what were the, not what was the ripple effect from what happened. You know, we, we started the show by saying if if, and we've I said mean, this for. I, to be clear, though, to be clear, if I was Kale and Nick Soriano, I would have done the same thing. That's what the problem is that the rules shouldn't allow for that. I, I agree with that. The rules should not allow for that. And this is not solely about Nick Suriano. This is not solely about Kale. You can go back to Dustin Slater. You can go back to Darian Caldwell. These things happened all – this isn't the first time. It won't be the last time. Listen, and, and I've said it on this show for years that health and timing are a very big thing. There's awesome accolades in wrestling and lost over the years is obviously – the contacts, and I think there's some things that Why will make it more. Why too much to ask for the guys to toe the line on conference weekend? Why is that too much to ask? Hell, they don't toe the line. Kale wrestled 159 matches. These kids today, there's guys that are in their sixth year. They don't have 100 wins. They don't wrestle during the regular season, and then you're going to give them off the hook in conference weekend too? Why don't we just Why don't we just put 77 guys on the mat in March? Have no season. Well, now you're just flying off the handles. But I, no, I understand no. what you're saying. I'm, I'm not. Nobody wants to wrestle. There's no. There's almost no bar. I, I I don't disagree. It was somebody was asking about my opinion on. I wrote an article about if I had a Hodge vote, where would it lean? And somebody was saying how. What's your thoughts on Aaron Brooks? his having a low match count this year in regards to the Hodge. And if you look back at Brooks' season, he's never more than 20 to 25 matches a year. You know, and it's like we, we do live in a world where people are a, a lot of times, especially in the Big Ten, it seems, wrestling less. No doubt. As a fan, obviously I want to see these guys compete more. Of course, who wouldn't? I'd love to see Carter, Brooks, all these guys hey, go have 40 matches hey, a season. Listen, if Carter would have wrestled one or two more matches... We wouldn't even be having this discussion. The only matches he really didn't win or, or wrestle were when he was sick and them not going to collegiate duels. Apart from that, there wasn't many yeah, times where he just that's had fine, veteran but, rest. Right? That's that's Then that's a failure of the team to schedule enough matches. A, a failure by what when you're talking about a team that just had nine out of 10 place in the top three at the big 10. If, hold on, hold if, on, if hold Carter on. Starocky, if Carter Starocky wrestled for the Bakersfield and this was the same situation, 
you can't say because the team had success that uh, they scheduled it the way they should have. <laughs> no, no. I, but you, you Carter said. Carter Starocki and Penn State caused somebody to lose a spot because Carter Starocki, A, didn't wrestle enough matches, and B, didn't wrestle at the conference tournament. That's a fact. Well, they should have got done during the season. We already discussed that. My point is, you said it's yep. you said it's a failure by the team. And at the end of the year, when you're assessing performance and you're assessing how the season went, and you're within the rule set, and you say, "Hey, Cal, you had nine out of ten placing the top three at Big Tens. You had this at nationals." That's his goal. His goal is to have national champions. His goal is to have Big Ten champions. So, I like, the, understand. But I understand. And, but if they change the rule, that you I agree. Had to, you had to allocate. Guess what? Kale would do things differently. Agree, well, without a doubt. Out. I know. I agree. And, and obviously, I know the most about the Penn State program. That's why I keep bringing them up. There's other situations. There's other occurrences. But you know, my point is because of Penn State's success, the spotlight is often on them. And you know, I I do think every coach in the league. Well, listen. I don't think that. I don't. I'm being a little harsh on Penn State this episode, but I am not saying that Penn. Sorry, State I got their back. Wrong. No, I know. Penn State did anything wrong in this scenario? What I'm saying is, if the rules were different, we wouldn't have to go through this circus. I don't disagree with that, and I and I do think that the. I don't know. I don't know if anybody in wrestling media loves Carter Strzok as much as I do. I love that kid. I'm not saying he did anything wrong. I'm saying even my favorite guys, I'm totally unbiased here. Even my favorite guys should have to prove on conference weekend that they're ready to go. To me, it should be the end-all, be-all. Conference weekend should be the end-all, be-all. You either hit your allocation or you don't. I, I don't disagree at all. I agree. I agree that it should be set up like a high school postseason, where if you don't go to sectional, super sectionals, district regions, whatever your state has, you don't get to the state tournament. I totally agree on that. I just think it's crazy that people are going after programs or coaches on gaming the system when don't hate the player, hate the game. Like That's the thing that's crazy. And, and I know yeah. you're not hating on KL or Penn State or anything. They're... If, if the rules were different and Carter had to wrestle this weekend, I think he would have wrestled. Now, if he would have got injured in that, that's a different story for a different time. But be that as it may, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I just think <clears throat> it, this happens every year. We're always up in arms about a selection or not a selection. We're always up in arms about this guy defaulted out. Nobody's been – nobody's been – has ran it and raved more about guys defaulting out than I have. Um, we've seen what happens under this system, and it's not good. So change the system. Yeah, I don't disagree. I'm all I'm all for the rules changing. Um, I just I saw Husker Willie going at it yesterday, so I said, well, if well, there's... It's, it's not it's. My my um my angst was not about Bubba Wilson. It was not about what Mark Manning was saying. It was it was not about Nebraska at all. I don't think that Bubba has a great case to get in, <laughs> right? My my response and why I kind of flew off the handle is because you got a, you got coaches from every corner of the country claiming foul. And I know they're hurting for their kids. They're hurting for their kids, and their kids are hurting, right? I also think that's because where, that's where my thing came from. That's where that's where I got fired up. Is all these kids, all these guys are hurting. Let's have just like, like let's have, just have a transparent system. And and let's please. I think one thing everybody can agree on. I don't know why this is a problem. Get rid of the coaches' rankings. Coaches are not ranking wrestlers. It, it's just it's so dumb get a committee of people use you use earl use piles use kozak use whoever in a committee and yeah. it, th- this this coach's rankings things just it's gotta go it, it's just yeah i really don't know why they're even why that's still still a thing well you know if you 
if you had that and you had some sort of ranking where there was a committee, you know, five or eight knowledgeable guys, you wouldn't even have to do a last ranking, really. What you you would use the last ranking would be used for the under my under my system how I would do it is I would take all those numbers including a five to eight person panel that does agrees on a final set of 33 rankings. And then the, and then the week before conferences do that formula to come out with allocations. Big 10 gets six at 133. Big uh, ACC gets three at 174, right? And then you don't have to do another ranking again because if those guys hit those marks, they're in. If you don't, you're out. Um, you tweeted out yesterday over under two and a half All Americans from the at large bids, but you yeah. did not give an answer on whether you think it'll be over or under. Well, I, you know, I think it's over. Funny uh, it's funny because I used to like make up fake betting lines. Um, actually, I did real betting lines for a while, but it, like it's hard. It's hard to ask the guy that sets the line what he's picking because I set the line. That's my yeah. line. I think that's a tough question. Um, I think it's over. Okay. I mean, Carter Carter's an automatic one. All right, look, ready? Um, hold on. Let me see something here. Everybody's saying it's so easy. It's over. Okay. <clears throat> you got um, – you got Carter Staraki as one, all right? So now you need two. I'm gonna read off the I'm gonna read off the at larges. You tell me if they're gonna AA. Elijah Griffin. No. Brandon Kaler. No. Tyler Klinsky. No. Let, let's do this. How about I tell you the guys I think that are gonna AA? Okay. I'll just do that. I think Steve O'Poolin has a has a good shot to AA. I think anything can happen at 125. And if and I lean towards him AA in a weight that's wide open and he's as tough as they come. So I think Steve O can. Will he? I'm not sure. Nick Buzakis, I think he AAs. Um Vince Cornella, I think, is on the bubbling, but I think he could AA. He hurt. He ain't AA. He might not even go. Bryce Andonian, I think, is all American. Steve O, by the way, just took seventh in the Big Twelve. I, I know. If it wasn't Behind for the fact Eric that... Rickenberger, Tyson Tarakina, Tanner Jordan, Noah Certain. If it wasn't for the wild card that is 25, where I feel like this year we're going to see guys take out... And we're going to do a preview show. We'll go through the brackets in full once no, they come out. Yeah, but. don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If Steve-O AA is my brain doesn't melt, but I ain't... That's what I'm saying. I ain't, put, I ain't putting money on it. No, I, yeah, as, as I said, I, I lean towards pulling. I lean towards Buzakis. Um, I lean towards Andonian. Rooting for Swisher. Vinny Zerbin has looked pretty good. Funky Big 12s. Carter, I think, is a shoe in. Mm -hmm. There's other guys that I could see, but I think those are my candidates as of now. Like, some of these weights are just so I just, crazy. I don't, like, believe in, I don't believe in Andonian's health. Um, I think Will Feldkamp, despite having a poor Big 12s, could. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, that two and a half number, I think, is right. No, it's a, it's a good line. It's it's Aside from Carter, the rest of those guys, they're not going to surprise you if they do. Or they just fall short, or the round. You know, it's it's not. It's a good line. I was just curious on on where you thought if you had. No, I don't. Uh, I, I tend to think, I I think two or three will. I think yeah. one's a guaranteed in Carter, and I think one or two others will. Yeah. No, I don't disagree. I can't wait till the brackets come out. I hope we get them early somehow. I love. You know what I love? The selection show. Um, no, hate that. Just give me the, <laughs> give me the freaking brackets. Uh, I love that y'all have to wait till eight, but I am in Idaho, so I get them at five. I get them much earlier than you guys. And you didn't even wake up earlier. You woke up at your normal time, so it's yeah. not like, hey, you get them at dinner time. 
and then we're gonna do a show we're gonna we're gonna go through the brackets weight by weight make our picks some of these weights i'm already dreading because what i'm i think what i'm gonna have to do for certain weights like 25 is print the bracket off and literally just fill out every single one and go through all the landmine and see who who i think is going to be in the semis let me get to the semis Who's your Hodge contender right as now? Soon as, as soon as they come out, then I'm gonna get the cranking on Crystal Ball, baby. Who do you? Who's your Hodge? Who's your Hodge front runner right now? Brooks. I think my front runners are Brooks and O'Toole, but here's my caveat: if Hindley or Messenbrink beat either of those two in the finals, well, that course. that is. Like, Hydley has looked so good all year. If he went out and beat Brooks in the finals, don't even do the Hodge vote. Just give it to him. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm just I'm just going off. Yeah. That's what a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying about what I was saying about uh, Carter Starocki. I said, at the time, at the time, Carter Starocki, to me, was leading. Now. Yeah, does, I agree. Does that mean he would win? I don't know, but at the time. Correct. And projecting it out, projecting it out, I think Brooks is going to have a close match with Hydley. I think I think Carter was I think Carter was more of a clear-cut favorite than AB. Um and and to me, you know, AB is a clear-cut favorite. Just, just Trent is closer to AB than anybody is at 74 to Carter. That's my point. I don't know if you saw it. I put it in the article and I tweeted it. But this is a wild but true fact, and and when talking about the Hodge, and I and I understand context. I know where you're going to go, but I'm just going to tell you the fact that's true. This year, Keegan O'Toole bumped up and beat who would become the Big Ten champ. That's a crazy stat. I understand the context, like Carter didn't wrestle, and and Ruth won in the finals with a medical forfeit or injury default, medical forfeit, whatever. But still a crazy stat that he bumped up and beat the guy who'd become the Big Ten champ. Yeah, no, I know. You you look at it, uh, Keegan Keegan bumped up, beat the Big Ten champ. Uh, he beat the EIWA champ. He beat um, Olesnik, who beat Hamidi at the All-Star Classic. He beat David Carr. Um, well, Zenik also beat Carr this year. So he's nineteen no. and zero. Seventy. Who beat Carr? Was it Ramirez? Hmm. Who beat Carr this year? Was it Ramirez? Yes. At yeah. Cause, yeah, because then he didn't wrestle at the collegiate tools and the world went nuts. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm excited to go through the brackets. I can't wait to get them. I'm gonna try to get a leaked so copy. We didn't we didn't do a recap show, you know, and it's sort of water under the bridge now. Um, but any thoughts on the conference tournaments? Uh, Braden Davis is Kale's first 125-pound Big Ten champ. Braden Davis, to me, looked unbelievable. I, he got number one Big Tens? No, I think he lost to NATO. He couldn't get past NATO. That's crazy because he was... Uh... They had Megan Lutis and Soriano, and Kale never had the 125-pound Big Ten champ. Nico was three two. Nico only had three losses at NCAAs ever. Yeah, Nico was a dog. He and now something, we... he was something like two three two one. I think he was two three two one, but he never won bigs, huh? Yeah. So that that Braden Davis, um, I thought looked so good. All year I've been like not as high on him. I'm, I'm like kind of keep waiting for the yeah, he's looked good so far, but and then this weekend he just looks looks incredible. Um It's so funny. I was talking to his dad um yesterday for a while and uh you know, the whole season, the whole season. His name's Steven, Steven Davis. Um they named it. They named a chicken after me. They named it. They have a chicken. Uh, but uh, the beginning of the season, 
I, you know, he's like, let's see how Braden does. And then, uh, you know, a couple matches, a couple weeks in, I'm like, I started tweeting. They need to start him. They need to start him. Texting Steven, I'm like, he needs to go. And he's like, well, we'll just trust whatever Kale thinks is the right move. And and so after Big Tens, he starts texting me. He's like, you know, he, kid looked pretty good, huh? And I said, yeah, he looked great. I said, uh, am I going to see you at NCAAs? He said, uh, he said, yeah, I, I got to book my stuff. I said, you didn't book your stuff yet? He's like, well, I didn't know how Big Tens were going to turn out. <laughs> Come on. That's funny. Yeah, he looked awesome. Um, and uh, he said, um, another good thing he said, and it's not surprising because you hear it over and over again. Steven said, my boy, it's amazing to see my boy grow, not just as a wrestler, but as a person in that program. He said, well, the uh, haters were crying about his interview. Yeah, I mean, he could have been a little bit better on camera. But... I thought it was great. I thought the interview was great. You put, yeah. put, you put the Whatever camera the in front of a 19-year-old kid. I thought he did awesome. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the case. I mean, I, I thought that was a really good thing. In in With all the success and, and the cheering and the bravos to Braden Davis, wow, he yeah. did it as a friend. Um, that Stephen Davis was like the, the biggest – one of the biggest concerns was like, or, you know, points of, of pride was uh, he's really developing as a human being, you know? So I thought that was cool. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Dylan Schauber teching Ragus in 23-8 is just bananas. That kid looked so good, had an awesome weekend. A lot of dog in him. That's what, you know, it's hard to, um, you, you think you can see dog in kids. You think you can see fight. And that's one of the things that's really difficult about talent evaluation and prospect rankings and stuff like that um, is that you could be, I, I tweeted a couple weeks ago. Um, you have to, you have to be an artist and a punching bag at the same time. You have to have skill and craft and technique but you also got to have some dog in you, man. You have to like rise above, fight through, fight through the toughness. When things get tough, fight through and, and, and rise above. And, you know, Schauber coming out of high school, good prospect. Let's see what I have him. Um, Jesse but, Mendez, too, at, at 41. You want to talk about the dog in you? Jesse well, Mendez, I mean, have, just. Well, Okay, he's one guy. I had Dylan Schauber, 73 in the class of 2020, and he didn't have – he had good success, not great success. He flashed um, – he flashed some toughness, but, like, it is, it is his toughness that overcomes. And this is a guy that basically got booted out of his spot at 125 and had to go up, and he's a Big Ten champ. Yeah, yeah. And Jesse Mendez has looked great all year. I thought this Jesse match was going to be a I mean, toss-up. I, I leaned Bo, but... Went, you know what? Like, you know what irks me about, like, I, I watching Jesse Mendez and the way he beat Real Woods? Is that he just went and took it. Like, he's in front head position and he's like, nope, I ain't letting him off the hook. I'm scoring here. And he just bulldogged him, right? And it's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating to watch that and not see it more often. I, I just don't feel like wrestlers go out and take it from some people enough. Go out and take it. Yeah, I agree. Messenbrink took it from Hamidi. That match was I, – I'd say the, the Hamidi, Hamidi um, – however, I always forget the right way to say it. Him and Messenbrink and then um, – Ryder Downey, some of these guys this weekend just, they fought, man. You love to see it. For as much as we talked about people not wrestling and, you know, there was a lot of guys who put on the line this weekend. Ryder Downey and Cody Chittam, I could watch wrestle for two hours straight. I know. Who's texting you that you're smirking? You know what? You know what? Is, what? That the, is that the Husker donors texting you? I saw a smirk. No, Piles. Piles is texting me right now. Saying Nebraska broke your brain with these qualifiers, and I, it's not—it's not Nebraska. It's not Nebraska at all. It's 
What, why do we need dorks behind a veil, um, behind a curtain, <laughs> cr crunching numbers to decide who's the last four? Dorks behind a veil. That's... Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we have? Um, we have a tournament. We have conference tournaments. Why don't we let the kids decide it on the mat? How about how uh, novel an idea is that? I don't think it's a great idea. Uh, what what stuck out to you about conference weekend? Anything in particular? Um, well, Penn State balled out. Michigan did really well. Um, you, you know, man, I always look ahead. I always extrapolate stuff. I'm like, I saw so many... So a lot of people were hung up, and rightfully so. I think it's terrible. Um, I love Jackson Arrington, but that was not a takedown. That was not a takedown in the ACC Finals. And while a lot of people are focusing on that, what I don't see outrage with is the three, four, five times I saw at Big Ten's a guy be completely behind somebody, even like fighting, you know, getting risk control. They're behind. They're totally behind. They essentially, for a visual, they, they have the person's back. The only thing is my leg is between your legs and, and you have a, a grip on it, a lock on it. And they are not awarding that a takedown. And, 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 the, the contrast between what is being awarded a takedown and what's not being awarded a takedown, I, people are going to lose their minds at NCAs. To me, that's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest takeaways is in the prelude to NCAAs, we're still seeing calls that are just make no sense. The, the stall call on Levi was highway robbery. I thought the stall call on Ridge was really stupid. I mean, there's just Gomez is just trying to cut off the mat and Ridge got Ridge got called against Parco for trying to force a stall call. What Gomez is just basically trying to keep Ridge on the edge of the mat. He's not letting him back in the center. What's the difference there? It's just it's frustrating. Yeah. I don't disagree. And we you know, neither I'll say this, neither call had any bearing on the match. Levi didn't lose because of it. Ridge didn't lose because of it. But consistency, guys, consistency. We don't want matches determined on that at NCAAs. I did see um, you tweeted out some, some of your favorite Legacy achievements, Dayton, five-time Big 12 champ, Ja'Cory Teamer, and Parker Keckheisen, four-time conference champ, Aaron Brooks, four Big Ten titles in five attempts. Those are a couple of really, really good uh, accolades. Hey, here's, here's one that I didn't list. Well, it didn't happen, but I compiled, if you go to Mass Scouts, you can see the freshman qualifiers, and I don't have historic numbers on how many freshmen qualify or win a conference or, or reach a final, but 50, uh, before wild cards, before wild cards, there, there's been some additional when the wild cards came out, I have to add them, um, some freshmen that qualify, but there were, um, 21 guys, 21 freshmen reached a conference final, which is awesome. It seems to me, I don't have historic numbers, but I, uh, I think that seems really high. And um, one guy that won that I think deserves a shout out, uh, Thomas Bruker from Appalachian State. He won as a true freshman. Wait, true? Or, uh, yeah, I think he's a true. He won as, a, anyway, he's a freshman. He won over Hopkins, who was going for his fourth. Damn. And this. And this kid, he was going for his fourth SOCON title, and this kid who's a freshman stopped that from happening. Now, why is that important? I mean, it's important in and of itself, but remember when Drayshawn Ross, who was the talk of the town, 
and he went to Super 32 and went one and two. You know who one of the guys that would beat him? Thomas Bruker. The dog. The kid out of North Carolina. Nobody knew who the hell he was. But Willie Turns did. Out pretty, Turns out he's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty good weekend. All right. Well, I'm pumped for brackets. I mean, we can. I feel like we could do a two or three hour show, but we're, yeah, let's we're... take a break. Inhale. And then uh, and we'll be back to. And, uh, we'll do a show in a few hours. Are you going to be up? Are you going to be like? Uh, yeah. Going to be able to go at like nine, ten o'clock. Well, I was going to ask you. I don't know. When do you want to start recording? You want to go like as soon as we get brackets and go through them in real time, or do you want to go through them first? Yeah, I got to go through them first. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll be back either. The episode will be out either late Wednesday or early, early Thursday morning. But either way, we got you. Putting you. This one up? you putting this one up now? Yeah, right now. All right. Attaboy. All right. Enjoy. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy Idaho. <laughs>